it Feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders I want to move closer but I don't control it I know I've been trying the door hasn't opened I know it sounds funny but really though In the beginning we really close Now we just cruising up on the coast Don't want to lose you, I really don't My God, I'm working so hard I let my guards down and I'm feeling so far You won't cut me off and I'm ready to grow And I'm ready to know you more Please, I honestly say I'm a chore It ain't my decision, it's yours But I will persuade with my arm Cause I'm ready to run to your arms I just want you to know That I wanna go To a place where I find you A place I call home A place where I'm not alone And maybe I'll grow Just a little bit more And I'll be your dog Then 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 I'll be your dog I go back and forth when I feel your presence I'm up above the world the much better but then i fall levels and levels below it don't know where i'm going don't know where i'm holding i say i gave up but i know i didn't it's just my frustration i'm only human i act like i know what i'm really doing as long as it's you that i'm really choosing i will never give up no i want to do it your way you're the king of the world only want to do what you say i know that it's possible to give back my heart to you do it that it's you choose. i just want you to know Till it's through. Please don't ignore me, please just adore me. Wanna be closer to you. I just wanna make you happy. A shining light looking right at me. I give to you gladly, that's my reaction. I just want you to know that I wanna go to a place where I find you. A place I call home, a place where I'm not alone. ITM Business Consultants comes Man in the Middle, your one-stop shop for financial tips and tricks that big banks in corporate America won't teach you and don't want you to know. Discussing the latest and greatest products, services, skills, and habits to grow and support the financial needs of your business and you. 
giving you the knowledge to help make your own important choices for your business and you. Disclaimer, Man in the Middle expressly disclaims any and all liability or responsibility for any direct, indirect, incidental, special, consequential, or other damages arising out of any individual's use of, reference to, reliance on, or inability to use this podcast or the information presented in this podcast. Now, here is your Man in the Middle with 10 years of experience in the financial and banking industry, Art Abrahamian. What is going on, everybody? Episode 22, Man in the Middle. We're happy to be here today. What's going on, Payson? What's going on? Happy to be here. Feel like we're, we're back again. Yeah, man, it's been crazy. We were, I was on vacation, you were on vacation, and then, you know, we're, we're two weeks away from moving into our office, which is finally happening, man. Finally happening. We have a poll up for whenever people start getting here, but the poll is going to show... Uh, one of the questions that says recent statistics show what percentage of businesses don't know their target audience. We're going to hold off, see how many more people come in to go into this poll. But before that, we'll just let it pile up and then we'll give them the answer. Before we get started, we want to thank our sponsor of the channel, USCCA. If you want to know more about USCCA, feel free to click that link in the description below. And we're going to go ahead and play their intro. And once that's all situated, we'll go ahead and get right back to you. It's in our nature to protect the ones we love, to stand up to any danger, to be strong and courageous, to always be prepared, to keep our family safe, to be the first line of defense. We are born to protect. Mason? Chills. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we are talking about what? So knowing what your target audience is as whatever type of business owner you are. So like it was something that I realized myself I needed to like I had someone ask me, like, hey, what's, like, your, what's your ideal client? Yeah. And at first, I was like, I don't Most know. Most people's answer is, like, anyone that breathes. Yeah. Right. And then they're like, no, no, like, think about all your past, your past clients, your past transactions. Like, who did you enjoy working with the most? Who did you get along with the most? And I was like, oh, broke it down, ended up being a ton of help. So I feel like it's just an important topic to go over because I feel like a lot of people, like you're saying, it's just like, Hey, whatever, whatever breathes, whatever has money in their pockets, that's what I, I want. And I don't think that's how you should go about it. I think you should have someone specific in mind that is going to be your target customer or your target audience, whatever yeah. it may be. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting topic. I, I, I'm kind of uh, – it's funny that we're talking about this because a couple clients have already asked us, like, you know, what's the, what's the ideal person to go after? And I feel like even as, as – the crew here we've had that conversation with each other where it's like well who do we go after go after so. the whales go after the you know uh, the smaller clients go after the mid-tier clients and it's like every client and every tier of client not that one's more valuable than the other that's not really where you're going with this kind of conversation it's more so just like are you trying to have a thousand people or are you trying to have like a hundred good paying people right so it comes down to like, well, what do you define? What is defined as like good paying people? Well, okay, well, we want to set our market standard for like over a thousand. You know, I could either sell 10 people a hundred bucks and make a thousand, or I could sell one person 1,000. And, and e each of those things have their pros and cons because it's like you go macro. You just try to hit as many people as you can for as little as you can, kind of like the app mentality, like a $1.99. Yeah, but if right. I do it a million times, I right. made a million dollars or $2 million. That could work. 
But the amount of work and effort that has to be put into that with maintenance and time and so on and so forth, yeah. uh, it has its own little breed. Whereas, like, what if I just got 10 clients at 100000 a year? That's a million dollars. But then it's like expectations go up because the amount of money that they spend. Right. the service has to be right. a lot better. So it, it's very interesting where it's like, I'm not going to vote in this poll because I already know the answer. So I'm like, I want to click the right answer, but I'm not going to. Um one of those things where it's like, hmm, okay, if I cater my, my my business towards the bigger clients, can I really support what their needs are? Mm-hmm. Because they're two different worlds. Like you buy a dollar ninety nine service, you bought it with the expectation, of, eh, I paid a dollar ninety nine. Right. You're not gonna what am get I it gonna get at it? Or if something it breaks, doesn't work, whatever. it's like eh, it's not that big of an investment. Right. But if it's something that you're spending a hundred thousand dollars on or so, you're like, okay, I need it needs to be like a white glove perfect sure, service. Of course, of course. And and you know what? I myself would have that expectation because you know, there's it's it's the same thing with why people buy nice cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's you, a reason people choose to drive Teslas. You know, why did you go get a Honda, Payson? Because you wanted a Tesla, you wanted that right. white glove that feel to it. And it's like, well, you're rightfully to expect that because you're paying the price that you would expect white glove service. Right. So it's, it's one of those things where it's like, what do you do and how do you target those people? Question you have to ask yourself is what is your capability? What can you actually service at the moment? Mm-hmm. Cause just cause you go for small clients today. Doesn't mean you can always go for small clients. Right. Doesn't mean you won't outgrow those clients and not outgrow them. That's not a really good word to say per se, because you don't want to outgrow your clients. You're right. still saying, like, when am I going to stop rendering that service to new people? Right. You know, you want a grandfather, whoever's in, in, and kind of focus on other things. And like every business is like the heck, even this business was like that. You know, we used to focus on just memberships and memberships only. And that was our bread and butter. And then eventually it got to a point where it's like, well, we can do so much more. And Truth be told, most of our clients, like our newer clients, it's worth like 30 memberships. So then I, you, you kind of weigh the options. Like it takes me 30 times the effort right. to maintain the same revenues for one, for what would equate to one person. Mm-hmm. And then, but see where, where it hurts too is if you lose that one person. It hurts 30 times more. Yeah. You've, it's not like you've lost one. It's like you've lost 30. Right. It's, it's a rough it's a rough middle middle ground because it's like it's the same thing with you. Like you started with smaller homes, yeah. under five, under five, and now you're like exclusively doing like million, million not, up. Not exclusively, but they're definitely more more focused. I I actually like the thing that we did, which is funny. Um, we went and I was like for a long time I was just trying to focus on like okay how can I get into selling luxury homes. And then I looked back at like who my past clients were that I enjoyed working with the most. And it was like the, it was the, the young family or like the family looking to buy a three bed, four bath home. Um, and I was like, well, I can, to me, I was like, I'd rather do 10 of those a month personally than try and sell one big home a month. Sure. Uh, and I, it's, and I was for a long time, people would tell me, well, like, oh, if you just work with one big home a month, it's less work. But in our world, it's actually not because that person expects, expects a yeah. million th- times more yeah. than what even those 10 people do. Right. But it's like I already sold your home. What else do you want? <laughs> right. <laughs> it, that's exactly. It's like, what else can I possibly do for you at this point? Sure. Well, you could come over and cook me dinner. Yeah. <laughs> like that's. <laughs> and, and, you know, I guess here's the, how often do you find yourself having to spoil the hiring clients yeah. a lot? Right. Right. And there's nothing, I mean, it's nothing inherently wrong with it, I guess. No. It's kind of just what their expectation are, and that's why they're willing to pay what they're willing to pay. Right. But I have noticed, too, with a lot of the larger clients, a lot of things when you market towards them, it's very, very specific. They want to get down to the nitty-gritty of literally everything that they're paying for and why right. they're paying. They're way, they are way more specific on what it is that they're paying for, how it's how it's valuable. They're, and, be, and obviously, like, we charge five to six percent for to sell a house so like if you think about six percent on two million dollars that's a lot different than six percent on two hundred thousand dollars sure so you're talking about a massive massive difference and and cost of 120,000 versus 12,000 so yeah, it's a hundred grand difference almost. they're going to literally it's more than a hundred grand if hundred eight thousand right so they're literally they want to know everything there is and they want to know how above and beyond you're going to go yeah uh and so that that was where so What's funny for me is, like, I started targeting specifically 
uh, families was what we went back to. And then now somehow after doing that for like a couple months, now I'm just getting a ton of higher end stuff. And I think it's just because business has picked up so much that it's just attracting a higher end audience now because of the amount of volume that we're doing. Yeah. Um, but like still, honestly, like I still, I sit an open house every single day and every single day it's a six, five to $600,000 house. Yeah. And like, that's our, that's, I would say that's our bread and butter. You know, another thing to think about is also like the market evolves, your clients evolve, the audience is evolving constantly where mm-hmm. it's like their lives are changing. What's ever happening, whatever's happening in the real world translate to their world. So if gas is up, their wallets hurt. It's like mm-hmm. our wallets hurt. But part of that is what makes them, especially with like looming recessions and stuff. We've been talking about being in a recession, but we're not in a recession, but we are in a recession, but we're not. And it's like, I feel like we're in a recession. We've been in a recession. The technical term of recession is like three consecutive quarters of, you know, negative, negative growth. And, that, you know, I know that they went on and they were trying to like, finagle their way out of it and be like that's not what it means we redefined it but it's like no you didn't redefine it that's what it is Mm -hmm. you know we're in a recession that's my truth you know that's how i feel about it whether people agree i don't care that's i go by statistically what it is but the recession changes the habit the habits the attitudes the preferences um so you're constantly feeling like you have to do a juggling act Mm -hmm. like okay i'm selling a luxury product but the market's not doing too hot and the recession's looming over everyone's head so it depends what you sell you know if you're selling commodities such as like gold silver well those are like a stable business where it's like you probably get more selling when it's high than buying because nobody really wants to buy when it's high but you're still going to get people doing some sort of transactional volume so it's um it's really interesting because it's like, I don't know if you know this, but like 82% of marketers uh, have trouble identify. You good? I missed a call. I'm oh. wondering if I. Well, 82% of marketers say they have, uh, you know, they have all this quality data on their clients, but they don't know how to convert it. Yeah. So it's like you have this algorithm that tells you what is, what isn't. And uh, because of that, uh, they don't know how to capitalize. Like you have to convert those, like they, like you know, the social media convert the clicks. Yep. Convert the clicks into the convert the likes into clicks and convert the clicks into likes and so on and so forth. So you can get that trending. You good? We need to take a break. I probably should call them back real quick. Okay, I we're gonna take a quick call for them. Yeah, no worries. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Let me go to inter- intermission. <laughs> Be right back.
All right, we're back now. Sorry about that. We thought we might have had a a, a little emergency there, but uh, all is good. Everything's good. All is good. We're back. Sorry about that. We'll go ahead and edit that one out in the in the final cut or when we go, when it uploads. But um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, eighty two percent, dude, of people 80. who who have high quality data on their clients don't know how to convert it into. Um, I'm gonna hold this thing. Go for it. <laughs> Matt, you would sound a lot better doing that. Okay. Let's do um, it. You know, how do you convert that? I mean, 82% is such a high number where it's like, how can you not convert that? I mean, it's literally 18% means that you're, you're, you know your audience. Right. So it makes you wonder, it's like, well, what does it require to keep up with trends? Because that's the other thing. It's like there's trends too. Uh, you know, I don't even have social media, but I have enough surrounding around social media to know that like sometimes things are just popular for no apparent reason and right. they are the and then, watch, but it always fades it always yeah, it's like, it, like it the watch boom i don't know if you remember yes the watch boom where it's like the inflation of watches because all of a sudden right. just watches were the thing Did you see that guy that got um apparently he was like scamming people he was flipping watches and he was scamming people which one, dude? I'm sure there's plenty. <laughs> there was a guy who was super... I forget his name because I, I only saw a little bit on TikTok about this whole watch thing. But this guy, he was massive on TikTok. I was, I feel like he was probably the biggest watch TikToker. Uh-huh. Uh, middle-aged guy. Uh, white guy wore a hat. I think he had a sleeve, tattoo sleeve. Okay. Um, dude was super popular. Sold a ton of... Like, flipped a ton of watches, bought a ton of watches. Apparently, it came out that he was... Um, he was... Selling watches, people or like brokering watches for people, but then he wouldn't. When he sold it, he wouldn't give the the owner the money. What? And that's how he was like affording his lifestyle because he was like driving fancy cars and doing all the fancy stuff. He was screwing people to afford his lifestyle. God, yes. you know that's the thing. Like you know, that's what goes with those people on on social media. It's like yeah, they have to try and keep up an image. And what you see do. isn't what what actually, actually is, is real. There. Correct. And and that's so frustrating. From our perspective, because it's like these stupid things that come about. I send them to you all the time at like yeah. 12 o'clock. I'm like, look at this. I'm infuriated <laughs> watching this. Like I recently came across something that told people that if they buried their loved ones in their backyard, they would avoid paying property tax. I'm like, that's not how that works. <laughs> what? You would have to convert your home into a freaking morgue, essentially, or a place where, where you can bury yeah, people. Yeah, that's not how it works. So, like, everybody's like, oh, what are you talking about? Look at all these articles, all these articles. And then attorneys started coming out. They're like, that's not how it works. Yeah. Like, if you no start burying that. one person there, you have to start burying everybody over there to make it a non, <laughs> non-tax, non you know, non-taxable thing. So it's like, great, we'll kill grandpa and bury him in the backyard. So I buried my goldfish taxes. back there last night. Yeah, I know. <laughs> buried. So, you know, I, we're going to talk about seven tips to know your audience better and how, you know, how important that, that is to stay on top of. Because, like, number one is going to be review any current data and analytics, right? That's, like, number one key. What's going on yeah. around me? What's going on with the company? Where are my drivers? Well, and I, I imagine go back through what's your, like, your past clients and look at what they look like as a person, what maybe their income level is, what they do for a living, whatever it may be. Um, I would imagine that's probably what it means, right? Go over yeah, your and past and current clients, see who they are. Because that was, like, what we had to do. We, we went back through our past sales, and it was like, okay, we wrote down how many of each type of person was per sale. Like, so if there was, we had five, say, homes in the 500,000 range, what were those five different people like? Or were they all the same? And yeah. then, like, see who tallied up to be the most, whether it be, like, a first-time home buyer, whether it be a family, whether it be a luxury home or, it's like, a second home buyer. So I would imagine that's what it means is, like, hey, go back through that or go through your current. Yeah, no, for sure. And, I mean, like, every business is different, right? Because imagine, like, we talk about this all the time. It, it, we've said this about the restaurant thing, but even if it's, like, a food truck type of deal where it's, like, who's my clients? You know, if I sell seafood, who are my clients? People who like seafood. Right. And who's my market that I haven't tapped? People who don't know they like seafood. Right. But I'm not going to focus on people who hate seafood. Right, yeah. It's the it's same thing with, right, it's the same thing with any business. So, like, reviewing what's going on. And, and stores, like, are a great example of this, right? Because they have loss, loss leaders. That's where they sell certain, like, Costco's a great, they sell their chicken super cheap. 
They right, sell their hot dogs. Yeah, that's a thing because of the owner. It, it is a commodity now where most people go there just for a hot dog. Right, and but I that imagine because their owner yeah refuses to raise right. the price. Right, and I imagine that because people go in there for a hot dog, like oh crap, I gotta go get toilet paper. I gotta go get this. Or I gotta go get that. Mm-hmm. But like lost drivers, lost leaders, if they call them the revenue drivers, is like we take a hit on our chicken, the rotisserie chicken. Right, but they make up for it probably Elsewhere, five ten right. x on something else. Right, because you you know one of the leading statistics say that you shouldn't go into a grocery store hungry because you end up buying like way more that's than you actually that's my mom my mom growing up she would come home especially the days that she was I'm hungry just going for milk weirdest weirdest snacks dude weirdest she would come back like I'd be like who would ever eat this in their right mind she's like well I was hungry and it sounded good yep there it is yeah yeah dude and and you know it's it's smart you have to remember that these companies spend millions of dollars in research and development to figure these things out. Actually, one of the biggest things I tell restaurant owners when they're, mm-hmm. when they're coming for consultations is what's your menu look like? And they go, well, I don't know. I'm like, why don't you create menus based on trends? Well, I don't know what to make. I'm like, dude, the big boys, McDonald's, Burger King, Chick-fil-A, they've already spent millions and millions of dollars doing marketing them. and researching. They know the R and D that went into it. They know what's popular. Copy them. Make the better version of whatever they right. make. Yeah, you don't need to pave a new path. Exactly. Just follow the path. Follow what's popular and, you know, do it from there. That's why you see, like, restaurants that have, like, TikTok and Instagram trendy things. Right. Uh, yeah, they already know it's popular because yeah. it's blowing up. Or, like, ridiculously large or ridiculously colorful or, like, ridiculously packed. Where it's like I saw this. There's a shake place in Palm Springs. I don't know if you're familiar yeah, the with The Great Shakes? Maybe. The one with the donut on yeah. there? Yeah. Great shake. It's like, people go there, and dude, it's like, it's a, it's okay. Yeah, I, it's, I, a, it's a shake. It just has a donut on it, and it's in Palm Springs. But it's super popular because yes. it is the Instagram. Yes, because it has a little donut on it, and it's in downtown Palm Springs. So right. people have to go visit it whenever they're in downtown Palm Springs. And number two on this list, look to previous success among your audience. Okay, so I guess I jumped. I guess I jumped. Yeah, around. you know, look look at what's worked in the past and, and grow from it. You know, a lot of the time, just because it worked in the past, it may not work in the future. But right. it doesn't mean that it can't work later or maybe some revisions right. to well, it. Well, and, and an example of that with us currently is right now, there's not as many first-time home buyers because interest rates jumped up again recently. But then, so we're like, now we're, all right, we've shifted our focus. But then, like, once interest rates drop back down, our focus will probably shift back towards first time home buyers. So right. you have to adapt to whatever is going on in the current marketplace, whatever your marketplace may be. And uh, number three, create a buyer personas. And if you're not familiar with that, is buyer personas essentially, it's just a detailed description of someone. Like an avatar, basically. Yeah, of who represents your target audience. And, you guys have never seen one. You should check those out on Google. And they're actually really fun to do. It, it kind of lets you uh, learn more about what you're trying to accomplish as a business owner, or as mm-hmm. a person who's trying to, you know, be an entrepreneur. But, you know, who are my, who's my target audience? What do they look like? What demographic? What age, age group? range? What, yeah, exactly. income. It's, like, it's a, it's mm-hmm. a huge uh, range. And when you start narrowing it down, it kind of gives you clarity of what you're trying to achieve. Again, who your buyer persona is today will probably change. Doesn't mean that it'll stay that way forever. So don't go into it with a mindset like, oh, once I make this decision, I can never leave. It, transitions when it comes to like businesses, they're not fast, but uh, it can be done mm-hmm. as long as you do them accordingly. Right. <clears throat> Conduct surveys. How is our products? What would you like to change? You know, I feel like the thing with surveys though is people utilize them in like every business you go to, but you never quite see a change. Right, yeah, it's just like it has a survey. That's like uh, Enterprise. They love their surveys. I don't yeah, know if you ever rent a car. Does. Well, like Enterprise, they like hound it, hound it. Like they and their and then their employees are rated heavily on the surveys. Like I feel like they may be the only one that does change based on their surveys, just because they they're so heavily uh, impacted. The store is by based on what their surveys are at the end of each month or whatever it is. Damn, three votes have already come in saying that 70% of recent statistics show what percentage of business owners don't know their target audience. Okay, I'm not going to say if that's right or wrong, but so far everybody's going the 70 route, so we'll see how this, if we have any more turnout at the end of it. But um, It's actually 100. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, No, but the survey thing is like, see... uh, the surveys make a difference in the service provided until 
once you finish the survey and you give them what they want, they don't care anymore. That's a common right. issue too. Right. Where it's like, you'll do the survey and then all of a sudden the service lacks. I actually have this thing where I refuse to complete any surveys until the service is completely rendered. Right. That makes and, sense. That's like, well, like that's like enterprise. You don't, you don't do the, you don't conduct the survey until the car's turned in and your keys are already in. You're already paid. Everything's completely done. Yeah. Like that's when you do the survey. So that way it's like, it doesn't matter. Like they can't go back and change things like for you. Like it's already done. you you, they have to live with it now. You know, surveys, working at the bank for so long, the surveys were so rough because the survey would be like a mixture of how was your experience and how was the person helping you? Right. And like, how do you like the bank? So like literally it would be yeah, like- you could do great, yeah. but then they could hate the bank. But, but you then would you still get, get in you, trouble. You yeah, because punishment. if everything wasn't a five, it was not, a, it was okay. Right. It wasn't okay. Right. So like some of the questions were like, uh, how was your person? Five. How would you rate your experience? Five. What would you tell your friends about it? Zero. Why did you put zero? I hate this bank. Yeah. I hate everything about this bank. The only reason I come here is that. And you're like, okay. And they're like, hey, you got a bad, bad review. And you're sitting here going, I got a bad. It sounds like you guys got, got a bad, bad review. review. Yeah. Like he said he loved me. He said, you're the piece of crap. But still, it fell on you. Right. And you're like, so what am I supposed to do? How's this supposed to make it better? I don't right. understand. Where am I supposed to change? Yeah. Like he just hates this place. So yeah. what am I supposed to do about that? That was such a common you, you thing. You got to move banks. That's what's got to happen. Yeah, apparently, you got to you like, move banks. You know, and they would say that, like, oh, hey, your survey didn't come in good. And I was like, let me see it. Read it. Five. How is your guy? Five. There would even be comments like, he's the only reason I come to this piece of shit bank. Zero. How was your experience? Zero. Would you recommend it to a friend? Zero. This, zero. You're like, and I'm looking over there like, dude, I don't think I'm the problem here. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think I did a great job. I think you guys are the problem. Like, what am I supposed to do here? You're the problem. And uh, so it's like the surveys matter. When you go on a macro scale, the problem is, is like, you can't really take the surveys to heart either. I get that. Because it's like your experience. Well, I think this should be this. Okay, but that's just you. Now, if I start right. getting that's percentiles. The, that's the of, problem with. Like sometimes on the customer side of things, my bad. So but sometimes customers on the side of it, they take it to like, oh well, if if you're asking, I think the ceiling should be blue instead yeah, of it's green. Like, it's like that's, okay, that's great. that's great. Here's the <laughs> suggestion box. It's just a trash can. That's what I used to tell people. I'm like, here you, you have a suggestion. It goes in this box. It's a trash can. I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so it's one of those things where it's like, as a small business though, I think asking your clients, you know, what would you like to see differently? And if somebody says like, you know what. I feel like this this is not the way that it should be. Great. Make a mental note of that and then add it up. If like 20 people say that, it's probably a safe assumption to say that the majority of yeah, people you've asked feel that. Be changed up. Yeah. And even then, even if 30 people don't like it and you make the changes, the people that were like okay with it, be like, why'd you change it? I really liked it. It's like, there's no winning. You know, you're never going to be on the good end of everything you do. But no. Um, number five. Keep an eye on your competitors. Super important. Because if your competitors are innovating in a way that you're just not, and I think I've talked about this story. I don't know if you remember me telling you, but like um, Target demolishing, um, God, what was that? What was Sears? Sears. You don't remember? You're young. Gosh, damn it. I remember Sears, but so I don't Sears know what you're talking about. Sears is like the Sears. original store in the United States. It was like one of the leading stores, the oldest store that it, right. it was like the first one. Like they Couldn't you order like a house on their catalog? You probably could, dude, back in the 50s or whatever. I'm sure you could. So uh, Sears was the number one store because it was like the only store. And what happened was then Walmart came along. So then uh -huh. Sears started losing market share to Walmart. Then Target came along and they started losing market share to Target. Okay. So what did Sears do? absolutely nothing they were like well we're sears we're the oldest everybody I loves us so like blockbuster in a sense yeah <laughs> like blockbuster rest, rest in peace blockbuster but <laughs> hey there's one left <laughs> yeah it's not even a real blockbuster but that's the example of what it is and it's like the competitors mm -hmm. were like contactless delivery we'll order for you shit target has an app on the refrigerators that it'll scan the inside of your fridge, and if it sees the milk is missing, it'll order it for you. That's crazy. They're like, shit, we'll pay for it. <laughs> we'll pay it for you. <laughs> like, they won't pay it for you. You put your account on there, and they buy it, but it's like, man. And then Sears is like, eh. I mean, yeah. we have a section full of tools. I was, the Sears at the mall isn't open anymore, oh, man, right? they closed that years ago. I was going to say, I thought so. I'm they just went bankrupt. Making, the whole company sure. went bankrupt. You okay. look at companies like Bed Bath & Beyond has gone bankrupt, too. Right. I saw that. I love I, I Bed saw, Bath & Beyond. Someone's buying them out, though. 
I don't know if somebody's, they probably bought their inventory or something. Oh, uh, maybe. I thought I heard someone buying them out. That's like, totally. Why would, why would they buy out the actual company? Like, it clearly is a, it's not a, it's a failing. Like, they lost to Amazon. They, everybody lost to Amazon. That's How true. do you Every, compete Everyone with that? lost to Amazon. <laughs> I happen to like Amazon a lot. I understand that what it's done to small mom and pop stores, and I get it. I feel for them, but it's, it's convenience at the end of the day. It's nice to know I can order something. It's there. People who, Sometimes within in a few hours. You're young. You're you're a lot younger than. Well, not a lot. I got ten, I got ten years on you. But when you were young, how did you order stuff? How did I order stuff? Sure. It took like thirty days to get there. If I, I know, but what did you use? Oh, a, t- a computer. No, obviously. I, I yeah. mean, like, what websites were you using to order stuff? Oh, like eBay. Okay, so you were around for that time. Yeah. There was a point where it's like there was no Amazon. Right. There t- websites on the. F- Target, I still and Walmart, use, I used like eBay and existed. Craigslist. Yeah, so it was Craigslist and eBay those. and stuff. And they were the sketchiest. I mean, they're now to the date, yeah. but they were ten times worse than that. Right. Like you'd buy a <laughs> you'd buy a washer and dryer, and there's some dude ready to pee on you, and you're like, "What the hell? I didn't order this." And he's like, "You know what I mean?" Like it was it was a cesspool of just weird right. You didn't people. know what you were going to get at all, and you were like guaranteed to get scammed right. nine out of 10 well, times. Well, that's why they have like eBay and yeah, stuff, this, right? Like exactly. the warranties this, and all this stuff. This wasn't a thing. The, the YouTube wasn't around at this time. So it's like none of this stuff existed. And it's like you would order stuff and it would take three weeks and we were happy with it. Why? Because right. we weren't used to self-gratification, like instant gratification yeah. where it's like done, everything on the spot. But now that we have it, it's hard to... Amazon's destroyed society. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even myself, where it's like, damn, this is going to take more than two days? <laughs> yeah. Like, what I know. do you mean? I will order, pro- if, especially when there's two products of the same thing. If one says two days and one says three days, the other one lost. Yeah. Like, if, even, if, even if it's like a, a, a few dollar difference and it's more expensive, it's like, all right, well, I get it a few days early. Like, I'm I, as long as it's something I need. If it's something I don't need, then I don't care. But no, I agree, man. It's it's hard to to make the transition of like, oh, I'm okay with going back to the way things were because, like, yeah, they were nostalgic in their own sense, but I they weren't better. Right. They were nostalgic, and we had more patience then, and we could walk out of the house without our phones, without freaking out. But things have changed, and it's like you can't really switch that back. But you know, when you look at your competitors going back to the Sears thing, it's like Sears refused to move on from adapt, the old way right. and adapt, and it refused to do that. And it just got to a point where it's like Sears did. They were still stuck your on the catalog. Your grandfather shopped at Sears. That was about it. Nobody went to Sears. Right. The, sh- the, the, the return policy wasn't good. They didn't price match. They didn't do anything. It was kind of yeah. just like, well, we're here. You know, the the original, well, you guys should come shop here because we're the original. It's like it's gone. I remember we got in uh, some big trouble at Sears growing up. We, I was with, we were with my friend's dad. Um, I think he was buying some tools. And my friend and I were playing hide and seek and like the racks of stuff. Mm. And uh, <laughs> my friend knocked the rack over and it did a domino effect throughout like a good chunk of the store with all the racks. It's like all the racks of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of a yeah, story. You got in so much trouble. My mom, my mom took me into a glass store like full of like China, fine China and stuff. She was just yelling at me. I'm like, seven or eight years old and she's like be careful don't knock anything over don't break anything be careful don't knock anything over i'm like okay i got it and then who knocks and breaks a bunch of stuff over was my mom (laughs) and i just looked at i was like be careful don't don't (laughs) Don't knock knock anything anything over (laughs) so you know keeping an eye on your competitors is important if somebody around you is doing r&d or something's working you don't have to copy them, but use what you know that's working and try to develop right. and mold it to something make, that's make, yours. Try and make a better version of it. Yeah, try. Don't try you know, just or just try to off. keep up with it. And right. You may not even be able to be better because you may not have the resources that somebody like Amazon would. But if but you hey, can, if you're against Mac- McDonald's, I mean, you could beat the quality. I would hope. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I would hope. If you can't, maybe you shouldn't be. <laughs> but I should be a business. So number six, monitor audience feedback, comments, and engagements. It's kind of you so know, like surveys. Yeah, it kind of goes back to surveys, reviews. Uh, maybe maybe looking reviews back. Reviews are important. Reviews. Talking about you know talking to people. They're just some people who are like, I'm going to leave you a bad review because I didn't get what I want. And right. It's like it's hard to. It's it's hard to you know South Park made an episode making fun of people who pretended to be, uh, uh, Yelp. Food I was going to say it had to be about Yelp food reviews. Yeah. And they're like, if you don't do this and clean oh, my laundry. I saw a clip yeah. of that, yeah. And if you don't do my laundry and do this, I'll write you a one-star <laughs> review. So, 
you know, if you guys haven't seen that episode, it's great. You should go watch it. But it's, it's I've only seen clips of it, but it was hilarious. It, it's true. It's as true as it gets. And 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 you know, number seven is experiment with content and updates to your products and services. Experimenting with content. I hate social media. I try. I'm trying to do it all. The Instagram stuff. I'm making clips and reels. I don't know if you saw. I I hate it too, but I've been posting on it. Oh yeah, I see your stuff more. all the time. Yours, your quality and your production has gone up and up and up. I'm Even trying. like wait for nice backgrounds and stuff. So it's like, hey man, more more power to you. And I've noticed you had some of your team doing it on your Instagram too. So that's great. Like I remember, it was a guy we brought Jeff, right? Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, I saw Jeff on it one of those days. Did you see the one where I fell in the pool? No, I have to. You have to show me that one. Yeah, See, that's did. the thing with me is I click it. I'm like, okay, cool, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Okay, next, next, next. And I'm done. Like, that's enough. That's enough yeah, social it was, media. It was a video. Jeff Jeff was talking about it. And then I started talking about the house. We were sitting in an open house. And then I fell in the pool. Were you like, was that a skit? Yeah, it was a skit. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah, I, <laughs> he wanted me to make it super cheesy. I was like, I need to walk the fine line between cheesy and real. Yeah. And I had people, and it, it worked because I had people leaving comments like, oh my, God. oh my gosh, you you fell in. Like, I was watching the floor and like, you fell in. And then some people were like, yeah, this is fake. Yeah. So, which was the whole <laughs> point of it. But it was supposed to just get people talking about it, which it, it did. Well, it worked. You know, good, bad publicity is good publicity. <laughs> and there's, there's no such thing as bad publicity. So, um, well, let's yeah you take a flight to an island it's bad publicity so <laughs> um content and updates to your products and services updating your products and services if the product that you're selling is no longer relevant in today's market yeah get what's the point yeah. get rid of it if the service you're offering in today's market is not relevant get rid of it if the service you're offering is not up to the standard or the quality of today's expectations right. adjust it if if you know like the, the back in the day i feel like the mentality was like my way or the highway. The customer was my way or the highway. And I feel like that's changed. Where businesses are like, it's not your way anymore. It's our way. And if you appreciate what we do, then come by. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's really important because I feel like as business needs to succeed when it's allowed to flourish and do what it does best. And those who appreciate the service and everything will come back for it. Right. That doesn't mean that there shouldn't be a standard of expectation or quality in the services Absolutely. or products that you render. But if you... If somebody walks into your hot dog stand and they're like, I want a burger. Sorry. Yeah. You're, you're not right here. Yeah. I do hot dogs. That's all I do. I don't yeah. do burgers. It's just, that's what it is. You're not, I'm not interested in that guy. This guy doesn't get it. It's the same people are like, well, I want a million dollars a year. Well, great for you. I want a million dollars a year. Get the hell out of here. Right. Like, that's not what we're here for. I ask this question when I'm like, what would you like your salary to be? When I talk to, you know employees for clients and I do an evaluation. I'm like, what would you like your salary? Like in an ideal world. So they're going to go hundred thousand. I bet you would. <laughs> well, let's go back to reality where you're not, you're, you know, you're parking cars. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that, but you're parking cars, cars outside yeah, the restaurant. No one's making a hundred grand right. doing that. So maybe in Dubai or something where you're getting tipped Tip, thousands yeah. of dollars, fine. But um, yeah, man, I don't know. It's an, it's an interesting time. It's an interesting concept. And, you know, we'll get it ready and wrap this up because I think we've been going for what? 40, 44 minutes. 44? Yeah, that's good enough. We minus our three-minute. Yeah, three-minute break. But, you know, just circling back around, you know, how do we, how do you make a, uh, some changes to your initial, like, marketing strategy and how important is it? We're going to pull it up real quick so we can go over the seven again. So, one second. I would say, it would just, just to recap, like, it, it helped my business so much by just going back through my past clients and like reviewing who they were as people and just tallying up, okay, who were the people I enjoyed working with most and like who I worked with most as the type of person. And then we just started going after that specifically. And that's when our business really started to flourish. I feel like. Yeah, man. I mean, that's, that's the thing is I'm trying, what if, how do you do this on a Mac to go back to your history? I just lost all my stuff on Safari or yeah. Are you on Chrome or so? no, I don't know Safari. how to use Safari. Yeah, whatever. The, the <laughs> I only use Chrome on my computer. I don't know, man. The seven tactics. I'm trying to find them again. I had it up here. Well, we'll cut this one out too. <laughs> <laughs> the seven tactics. Know your audience. Yeah. You know, do your market research. Know your competitors. Uh, your personas. Your buyer personas. Uh, look at your, you know, it's, it's, it's a plethora of things. It's, it's just common sense stuff. Take a look at what's working in today's world. Try to match it to what you got going on, you know, and if you can't, then 
you need to make some changes because the buyer market is just going to flash you by when and you're still over there talking about the good old days. It's just not how it works in today's day and age. The, the way the things move, they're really fast. They're, the pace is hard to keep up with, and you always feel like you're constantly changing. Now, if you feel like that's too overwhelming, then stop trying to keep up with it and just keep what's working because sometimes right. you just can't keep up with every single trend. Financially, it doesn't make sense. Otherwise, you're going to be getting rid of product every week and getting new product right. every week. But like shoes, shoes are a big thing. The shoe sales people, uh, one minute this is hot, next minute this is hot, next minute this is hot. It's like these yep. resellers are, are, are crazy profit margins on some of the stuff they buy. You know, I see these like the Astro boots, the red, the are red you Astro talking about those boy. red, yeah. The giant boots. Yeah. Like I sit there and I'm like. Who would pay for those? And they pay. That's the thing. I know. People who pay, but it's like, Aren't are you like really paying? Yeah. It's like, are you really buying it because you think they're cool? Or are you buying it because everybody thinks they're cool? And it's like, there's a, there's a level Maybe of like. That's such a stupid reason. To I don't know. <laughs> that's the reason why people do a lot of things, man. That's the reason yeah, why people they do think a lot other of people think it's cool. I it's know. like. You know, but that's that's not. You should for do this stuff one. just because you think it's cool. I agree. I agree. Um, anyways, so before we wrap up here, recent statistics show what percentage of business don't know their target audience. The answer is actually forty five percent. Dang! So all three voters. I feel like that's wrong. BS. No, forty five. I feel like those businesses were lying. <laughs> well, it was taken up over twelve hundred businesses after they did surveys. So they, they just didn't want to seem bad. Yeah, I guess. So uh, well, it's like it's like when when you ask people like, "Hey, how how tall are you?" and then they're like, "Oh, I'm six one. And then you go and you measure them, and they're five ten. I don't know why we had to talk about how tall people are. I'm sorry. I, feel I'm like just, I was, was just direct, thinking of a random. I feel like one. that was a direct attack on me. No, five four, by the way. Five four. <laughs> You know, I went through all this time thinking I was 5'2", and I was at the doctor, and they measured me. They're like, 5'4". I was like, wait a minute, what? Like, I'm like I six grew. feet tall now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand what 5'4", to a guy that thought he was 5'2", means. That was the world to me, all right? He could have told me I was cancer-free at that second. I don't have cancer. That's a joke, but it's it's like equivalent of how amazing news that is. But uh, anyways, want to thank everybody for tuning in. Payson, it's been a couple weeks. I know this was a wobbly one we're kind of struggling to get things going right now we're still trying to transition over to the new office which we should be in there we're, we have to be out of this one by the end of september so october 1st um well, september 30th technically we're moved out of here october 1st will be in our bigger office nice. and we're gonna have somebody come down from san diego who's in radio broadcasting and he's kind of stage everything for us so you know enjoy these podcasts while you can because there's some changes coming working on a few partner deals right now with a couple companies hopefully they uh, go through and we'll see but uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. Payson, I look forward to hopefully we can get together next week. I know we yeah. said Mondays at 7. We might do Mondays at 6. We're kind of just throwing things around. Payson's schedule, my schedule is really hectic as of lately, and we're getting into season. So thank you, everybody. We appreciate your time, and enjoy the rest of your night. Yes, sir. Oh, my stupid button's not working, dude. Hold on. <laughs>